Hey there, everyone. In today's tutorial, we are diving back into the dynamic world of data analysis, but with a twist. Instead of working with CSV files like we did last time, we are stepping it up a notch by connecting directly to an SQL database and pulling our query straight into Power BI to craft some stunning visuals. It's an exciting time to dive into SQL and Power BI especially with the demand for the skills skyrocketing in the job market. This session was actually inspired by one of you. After receiving a request from a subscriber, I knew it was the perfect topic to tackle next. So, remember, if there's a specific topic you're eager to learn more about, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. Your input really shapes what I explore in these tutorials and I'm here to dive into those areas you're curious about. On a similar note, a buddy of mine reached out asking for a tutorial on how to create an automated template to track employee hours and align them with the fees charged to clients. To my friend and anyone else intrigued by this, I haven't forgotten. That's going to be the focus of our next tutorial. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you won't miss out when the video goes live. Stick around, dive deep with us into the world of data analysis and let's unlock the potential of SQL and Power BI together. Now, let's dive into the heart of this tutorial where we are going to unlock the potential of data to drive business decisions. Today, we are focusing on exploring revenue in various dimensions using a hypothetical data set. We will learn how to aggregate revenue by region with SQL to identify the top earning areas. Next, we will group revenue by department to see which sectors are the most profitable. We are also going to pinpoint the top clients from our data set. To gauge our sources, we will monitor several key performance indicators directly within Power BI. Our total revenue, the total hours of service provided, the contribution of each region to our overall revenue, and how our revenue grows month by month. So this tutorial is designed to equip you with the SQL queries and the Power BI techniques needed to extract these insights, turning raw data into strategic knowledge. Now, let's dive in and transform these numbers into actionable business strategies. There are two parts to this tutorial. Part one is the MS SQL Server Basics. We start by creating a database in SQL Server. Think of it as setting up your new home where all your data live. Next, we bring in our raw data into SQL Server. It's like moving your stuff into a new house. I will show you how easy it is to do. Once our data fills our home in the SQL Server, we are ready to start the conversation. Think of SQL queries as the language we use to ask our data all sorts of questions from the simple hellos to the more complex brain teasers. I will guide you through crafting these queries and guess what? You can use these same tricks on other databases like my SQL or any other one. After finding our answers, we will make a report. This is like telling a story about what we found. It's not just for our use. It's also for anyone who might need to know about our data adventure. It could be your colleagues, your boss, or anyone at all. And then the part two, which is the Power BI for visuals. We will connect Power BI to our SQL server. This is like drawing a map that shows where her data lives and how it moves. These are the softwares that will be used in this tutorial. I'll provide a link in the description for you to use if you don't already have them. All right, let's dive into how we can bring a CSV file which contains our service data and branch data into the MS SQL Server using the SQL Server Management Studio. This process is like moving our data into a new home where we can start analyzing it. First up, 
Open SK Hall Server Management Studio. Once it's open, you will see a spot to enter your server name. This name is crucial because we will need it to connect Power BI to our SQL Health server later. You can jot down this server name somewhere safe or copy and paste it into a document. So click on the connect button to have access to the interface. To get started, let's create a new database or a new home for our service and branch data table. Right click on the databases folder in your SK Hall Server Management Studio, choose New Database and give it a name that reflects its purpose, like Service Branch, and click OK. Great! Now we have a new database created, but it's like an empty library waiting for books. Our books in this case are the CSV files with our data. So let's have those added to our database. To add data to the database, right click on your new database name and go to task. Look for import flat file. That's the option we want, not just import data. This is specially designed for bringing in data from files like ours. So click on the import flat file and the wizard opens up. Click next to move through the steps. You will need to locate your CSV files. So click the browse button, find your files, make sure it's the one with your service and branch data. I want to bring in my services data table first. So I will select that and click open. Then next. If you have the file open in another program like Excel, make sure to close it first. The SK Hall Server Management Studio needs exclusive access to be able to read it. So click OK and then next. After selecting your file, you will see a preview of your data in the wizard. This is a good time to check that everything looks right. Click next through the wizard, checking that the column names and data types look correct. SQ Health Server will try its best to figure out the right data types for the column names, but it's good to double check. So let's confirm that each column in our services data has been assigned the correct data type. For the service ID for this primary key, it provides a unique numerical identifier for each service record. This would also be an integer. For her client name, variable length character string has been assigned to it by the SQL server. I'll just have that increased to this. And why are we going with this? because it's versatile, accommodating names of varying lengths from Hehel to Alexander the Great. It allows the flexibility to accommodate deal for service date and service time. So we will leave it as it is. For hourly rate and total revenue, decimal integer is perfect for this to capture the exact monetary values right down to the last cents. So I will have this change to 10 and this to two. The branch ID will be a fixed length character string, which would also act as a foreign key connecting to the branch data. This reference needs to be consistent and is typically marked in the table creation process by checking a foreign key box or writing the foreign key constraints. It ensures that the data matches a valid branch ID from the other data set, which is the branch data table. So fixed length character string is ideal for these fixed length identifiers. Unlike the variable length character string, the fixed length character string is better for storing data that is always the same length. It ensures uniformity and efficiency in storage. For department, the variable length character string has been assigned to it with 50 characters. This would give enough room for various department names without taking up unnecessary space. And lastly, for service description, we're going to opt for the variable length character string, which has been assigned to it already by the SK Hall server. I will just have this increased because of the potential variation in length of the descriptions provided for each service. And also, remember to check the box for your primary key, which is our service ID in this case. So click next. And finally, you will finish the wizard and your data will be successfully imported into the SQL server. 
let's check to see that our table has been imported and there you have it it's like unloading books into our library so i'm going to go through the same process to bring in the other data set as for the branch data table fixed length character string stands out again for its uniform length across all its records so i would change this to two we don't need 10 and we will leave the variable length character string 50 for country and region it will cater to names that may span beyond a couple of characters and to ensure that no name is trimmed or truncated so check the primary key button for the branch id because it's a primary key click next and then finish the wizard let's check if our data has been listed here as a table if you're not seeing it listed just click on refresh and that should have it listed we have our services data table and also our branch data table successfully loaded all right now that we have imported our two data sets into our database the next step is to link them together to enable more powerful and connected analysis in our tables each service record in the service table relates to a branch in the branch table so to make this connection we need to establish a relationship between these tables using what's called a foreign key this foreign key is like a bridge that tells our database how these tables are related so specifically we are going to tell the database that the branch id field in the service data table corresponds to the branch id field in the branch data table doing this allows us to accurately track which services are performed at which branches and have our data analyzed with respect to regions departments and more so let's have this key relationship set up we're going to be using the sql command for this so with our service branch database selected click on new query we are going to use this sql command to create the key relationship breaking this down this tells sql server you are changing the structure of the service table the hard constraint function adds a new constraint named fk branch id to the service data table the fk prefix is a common convention indicating a foreign key this specifies that the branch id column in the service table is to be used as a foreign key and finally this indicates that the foreign key is referencing the branch id column in the branch table so this is the code we're going to use but before executing this command you need to make sure that the data type of the branch id in the service table matches the data type of the branch id in the branch table this is the branch data table and we have the fixed length character string set as a data type for the branch id we should have the same in our service table and that branch id is a primary key or has a unique constraint in the branch table which i believe we did if they don't match or if the branch id isn't a primary key the foreign key relationship cannot be established so let's execute this code and come to the left here to confirm that the foreign key has actually been created in the service table it's not showing now so if i click on the refresh button i should have that listed as you see so now step three of our journey delves into the art of sql query writing this is where we transform data into insights by asking the right questions let's start mapping out the queries for the first problem statement, revenue by region, we aim to discover which regions are the powerhouses of revenue. To do this, we will sum the total fees from our service data and match them with their respective regions from the branch data. Let's get the code for that. For the first problem statement, we will use this code. Let's dissect this. This command starts our query signaling we are about to specify what data we want here we are selecting the region from our data branch table which we have nicknamed b it's like saying please show me where each sales happened 
geographically. And with this command, we are instructing SQL to tally up the revenue from the service data, nicknamed HES, and have this total presented as total revenue. This step is akin to asking, what's the total amount made in each region? This part tells SQL we are pulling data from the service data table, which we are calling S for short. With this, we are linking our service data with branch data, nicknamed B, creating a partnership between the two. This join allows us to match services with their geographical locations. And this condition ensures we only join records that have matching branch IDs, effectively aligning services with the correct branch. After gathering the data, we organize it by region, grouping all services by where they were offered. And lastly, we sort out our regions based on their total revenue, from highest to lowest, ensuring the first performer is first on the list. So, we're going to have this executed. And here's the result we have, exactly as we expected. We have a table with two columns, the region and the total revenue for each region. I mentioned earlier that we're going to have a report created for all our queries, so we can easily refer to them in Power BI. I would also be sharing this created report with you. Now, copying the query for the first problem statement, and I'll have that pasted in my report sheet. Moving on to problem statement two. Which departments are the financial champions? We will find this out by summing up revenues for each department. For that, we will use this code. The select department command says, list all the different departments for me. And here, we are asking SQL to calculate the total revenue for each department and label these calculations as total revenue. It's a way of understanding which department has contributed the most financially. We are looking at the service data table for this information, where all our service records live. Then, by grouping our results by department, we ensure that we get a separate total for each, allowing us to see how each department stacks up against the others. And lastly, sorting our results in descending order lets us quickly identify the highest earning department. So, by grouping and ordering, we can easily spot which department is bringing in the most dough. So we would execute this and here is the result. So I'm going to save this query in the report. Now we want to find our VIP clients, the ones who give us the most business. We had up all the revenue again but focus on each client's contribution. By sorting the sums from highest to lowest, we find our top patron. Let's get the code for that. For that problem statement, here's the code we're going to use. This is saying, show me the names of all our clients. This part is asking for a roster of clients we've served. And this command combines each client's total spend with ours and have it presented as total revenue. It's equivalent to asking how much has each client paid us in total. The data comes from our service data table where all transactions are recorded. Then grouping by client name ensures we total the revenue per client rather than getting one big lump sum. And then finally, we order her list so the clients who paid us the most is at the top. So I'm going to execute this to see the result. So I will copy the code as usual and have it pasted in a report. Now we would calculate the KPIs that measure our business health. The first one is total revenue. And for that, let's get the code. This is the code we're going to use for the first KPI. With this query, we are telling SQL, please add up everything in the total revenue column for me. By using this, 
we are asking for the total amount of revenue generated across all records in the service data table. The as total revenue part is us naming the sum total revenue and this specifies the source of our data. In this case, we are looking at the services data table where all our revenue information is stored. This is a very simple query. So let's have that executed and here is what we have. So I'm going to save that in our report. For the next KPI, total hours, we're going to use this code. This is also a very simple and straightforward one. So I will not be going into details. So let's execute that and we have our result generated here for us. So I'll copy that and paste also in the report. The third KPI here, we compare revenue of specific criteria to the overall revenue in order to understand proportions. Now, to calculate the revenue percentage of each department compared to the total revenue, we will use a subquery to get the total revenue and then calculate each department's revenue as a percentage of this total. Let's get the code for that. This is the code for that, breaking it down. We start by selecting department from our services data table. It tells SQL, I want to group my results by department. This part sums up the revenue for each department. It's like saying, tell me how much each department made. Here is where it gets interesting. We divide the revenue of each department by the total revenue, which we obtain through a subquery and then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. So this expression calculates what portion of the total revenue each department contributes. The subquery fetches the total revenue from the entire table, serving as a denominator for the percentage calculation. This indicates that our data is coming from the service data table, where we have detailed records of revenue. And finally, with this, we group our results by department because we want to see this calculation for each department separately. So let's execute this and have the query saved. So calculate the last KPI, which is the month on month revenue percentage increase. You're going to use a combination of SQL functions to group revenue by month calculate the revenue for each of those months and then compare each month's revenue to the previous month to find the percentage increase. So for the last problem statement, we are going to dive into two powerful tools in SQL, the common table expressions, that is the CTEs and the lag function. Let me explain what each one is and why they are so useful. Common table expressions are a way to organize complex SQL queries. Think of a CTE like a temporary table that you can use within your query to simplify it. It's especially handy when you have to break down your data processing into manageable steps. So instead of jumbling everything together, you can use a CTE to separate parts of your query, making it easier to read and maintain. It's more like preparing your ingredients before cooking a complex dish. While the lag function is a bit like having a time machine for your data. It lets you look back at previous rows of your table based on the order you specify. For example, if you're looking at sales data by month, lag allows you to pick at the sales in the month before the current one you're examining. So it's incredibly useful for comparing how things change over time, like tracking how sales grow or shrink from one month to the next. Therefore, Using these two tools, we are going to analyze our data in steps. First, we will group our revenue by month using a CTE to create a clear month by month view of our earnings. Then we will use the lag function to compare each month's earnings to the previous one, letting us calculate how much our revenue has increased or decreased in percentage terms. So let's get started. 
Let's break down the query into simpler components, focusing on STEs, the lag function, and the overall flow of the query. This CTE, named monthly revenue, creates a temporary result that organizes our revenue data by month. It's like making a temporary table that helps us see how much money was made each month. This part changes the service date into a string, which helps us to group our revenue by each month. Here, we add up the total revenue for each grouped month, giving us a sum of how much was made in each month. The group by format ensures that we are adding up revenues within the same month, keeping everything neat and organized. This second CTE, named Revenue Comparison, builds on the monthly revenue we calculated before. Now, we are going to compare each month's revenue to the previous month's revenue using a special function called lag. The lag function is like looking one row up or one step back from where we are. Since we have ordered our data by month, one row up means the previous month. So this part gets us the revenue from the previous month and calls it previous month revenue. Now, we select the month, the revenue of that month, and what we made from the month before, all from our second CTE revenue comparison. This bit of math calculates the percentage increase or decrease in revenue from the previous month to the current month. It's checking how much we grew or shrunk by comparing this month's revenue to last month. And lastly, we use this condition to skip the very first month in our data. Since there's no month before the first one to compare it to, we cannot calculate a percentage change for it. So in SQL, a common table expression is always introduced with the keyword weeks. So to have this executed, I would select the code and click on execute. Here's the result we have. We have a table showing the month, the current month revenue, the previous month revenue and the percentage increase, just like we expected. So let's copy this code and save it in our report. We are now going to transform our raw data into insightful visualizations using Power BI and SQL Server. Our journey would cover everything from connecting Power BI to our SQL Server using direct query to creating dynamic visuals that bring our data to life. So first up, we connect Power BI to the SQL Server via Direct Query. Why Direct Query? It allows us to use our SQL Server data in real time without having it imported into Power BI. So this means our reports are always up to date with the latest data directly from the source. So with our Power BI desktop opened, select Get Data from the Home tab and enter your server details, that is the server name and database from which you're pulling data. I have mine saved here for his. This step is crucial for establishing a live data connection. Opt for direct query for real-time data analysis and click on the drop-down arrow for advanced option. All right, so we are going to tackle this in two main steps. First, we bring in the SQL queries we have set up. These are for specific visuals that need a tailored look at our data. Next, we will connect directly to our main tables, the services data table and the branch data table. This way, we can dive into our data with DAX for our KPI visuals, making them dynamic and interactive. You might wonder, why not make all our queries directly in Power BI? Well, connecting straight to our SQL Server and crafting queries there could have been a straightforward part. But I chose to show you both ways, using pre-made SQL queries and direct table connections. This gives you a full view of your options so you can pick what suits your needs best. Plus, 
prepping Aquarius first in SQL has its perks, especially when you're juggling data from various places. It can really simplify things before you bring it all into Power BI for the final touch up. So let's start loading Aquarius. You need to first ensure that each SQL query you intend to use is ready. Now, with loading the SQL queries, you can either load the SQL queries one by one, creating a separate data model for each one, or have it combined. Instead of combining the queries, we will have them loaded individually into Power BI. Here is how to proceed with the individual loading. You need to first ensure that each SQL query you intend to use is ready. It is in our own case because we had created the report for this earlier. So I'm going to get the query for the first problem statement and paste it here. This query should extract data from your database for one aspect of your report. However, to ensure Power BI reports can dynamically filter by quarters or other time dimensions, we need to have this query adjusted to include date information. This will be useful in linking our data with a separate date table in Power BI. So this query has just been modified to include the service dates. So click OK and then you get a preview of your data. Have that loaded into Power BI. And with that, we have a data module created on the right here based on the result sets of your query. As you load the data, you need to give it a meaningful name that reflects the data or analysis it represents. Since the first problem statement is revenue by region, I will give it that same name. To add more data modules based on different queries, repeat steps for each SQL query you have prepared. Remember, loading individually allows you to maintain distinct data modules for different analytical purposes. We will now connect directly to our main tables in the SQL server to create DAX queries for our KPIs. So you click on get data again, select SQL server and get your server details. It's funny we have to do this at each time. Still going with the direct query mode. But this time, you don't need to select the advanced options drop down menu because we're going to be importing the data directly. So you have your tables listed here as it is in the SQL server. Select both and click load to have that brought into Power BI. And as you can see on the right here, we have our data tables successfully loaded into Power BI. This is the services data table and right up here is the branch data table. So with all our data connected, let's start creating DAX measures for our KPIs. These measures calculate our key metrics like total revenue, total hours, revenue by region over overall revenue, and month on month revenue percentage increase. So in the fields pane, right click on your services data table and choose new measure. You're going to enter the DAX formula for each KPI here. So for example, for total revenue, we will be using this code. This would add up all the revenue entries from the services data table. So sum is a DAX function that adds up all the numbers in the total revenue column of the services data table, giving us total revenue. We're going to commit that and write on the services data we have the calculated column for total revenue listed. For the KPI total hours, we will do the same. 
and use this DAX measure to sum the total hours recorded in the services data table. Similar to the total revenue measure, sum here calculates the total sum of all values in the hours column, providing the total amount of hours logged. So click on this to commit it and then we have the calculated column listed on the right here. For the next KPI, revenue percentage of overall by region. Right click again for a new measure and here is the measure we are going to use for that. Divide is a function that safely divides two numbers and undoes division by zero by returning blank. This gives the total revenue for the current filter context, which could be a specific region if a region filter is applied. This recalculates the total revenue measure over all the data, ignoring filters that may have been applied. It gives the overall total revenue and multiplying it by 100 converts the ratio to a percentage. So commit that and we have it listed as a calculated column. And finally, for the last KPI, this is the measure we're going to use to get the calculated column. This sums up all the revenue for the current month. It gives us the total money made this month. This also sums up all the revenue, but this time for the previous month, it tells us how much money was made last month. And by dividing current month's revenue by last month, we can see how much the revenue has grown or shrunk. If you made more money this month than last, this number will be greater than one. To have the growth turned to a percentage, we subtract one to find the actual increase or decrease. And then multiplying it by 100 gives us a nice percentage number that tells us how much the revenue has increased or decreased from last month to this month. So to have this summarized, the formula first finds out how much money was made in the current and previous months. Then it calculates the growth or decline in revenue from one month to the next and have that expressed as a percentage. So let's commit that. We have an error here that says the column date column in a table services data cannot be found. And that's because the title we have for our date is service date. So I'm going to have date column replaced with service date. I think that's the only place we have it. And we should be fine now. So commit that again. And we are good to go. When analyzing trends over time in Power BI, leveraging a date hierarchy can be incredibly useful. This hierarchy allows us to drill down from year to quarter to month seamlessly. If we import our data into Power BI using the import mode, Power BI often automatically recognizes date fields and have these hierarchies created for us. However, there may be scenarios like this one where we need more control or when Power BI does not automatically generate a hierarchy as expected. In such cases, having a custom table created becomes essential. So, to manually create a date hierarchy, you would need a comprehensive date table that spans all dates present in your data set. Here is how you can create one. So, Navigate to the Modeling tab in the Power BI Desktop and select New Table. We are going to be using this DAX expression to generate the date table. Breaking down this code, this DAX function generates a sequence of dates in a table that covers a specified start date to an end date. The minimum function finds the earliest that is the minimum date in your services data set why the maximum function finds the latest that is the maximum date in your services data set so this calendar function here creates a list of dates that covers the entire range from the earliest to the latest date in your service data 
It ensures you have a continuous date range for analysis, eliminating gaps that could affect time-based comparisons. So let's commit that and we can see the date table on the right here listed as a table or a data model. After creating your date table, you will now need to add more columns to break down the time further into year, quarter and month. This is also going to be done through calculated columns using DAX expressions. So we're going to start by creating a column for year, new column, and use this expression for that. And what does this say? Create a new column named year and extract the year part from each date in the date column of the date table. So click on this to commit that. And then in the same way, we have a new column created as well for her quarter and month. The measure for quarter says create a new column named quarter and this retrieves the quarter number one through four for each date in the date column. While the quarter string is used to concatenate with the quarter number resulting in values like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three and quarter four. So generate that by clicking on this and then quickly we have the calculated column for month created as well using this code. It says create a new column called month. The format function is used here to convert each date into a text string representing its month name. And this tells the format function to output the full name of the month, e.g. January, February, etc. instead of the month number. So we have that generated by clicking this and you have it listed on the right here. Now that we have all our data loaded into Power BI, including the main tables, service table, branch table, and any other table from our modified queries that now include a date column, as well as a comprehensive date table. The next crucial step is to establish relationships between all these tables. I'm going to walk you through two main methods to create these relationships. So to start, open the model view on the left here. You have all your tables here. All the tables we have are with a date column, except for the branch data table, which has already been connected to the services data table using the branch ID. So with the date column in the services data table, the branch data table is covered. So create relationships using the drag and drop method, which I consider the easiest method. You will click and hold on the service date column in any of these tables and drag it to the date column in your date table. So I'm going to move my date table here for his. Starting with the revenue by region table, click and hold on the service date column and drag it to the date column in your date table. That would open up the create relationship page. The cardinality is typically many to one, with our data tables having many entries for each unique date in our date table. And for the cross filter direction, single direction is often sufficient. However, you may opt for both if bidirectional filtering is required for your analysis. Ensure the make this relationship active option is checked unless you have a specific scenario that requires it to be inactive. Click OK to create the relationship and there you have it. We have the revenue by region table connected with the date table using the date column on both tables. Now we are going to use the second method of creating this relationship. So in the home tab, click on the manage relationship button and initiate a new relationship. For the first table selection, select one of your data tables and for the second table, select your date table and choose the appropriate date columns on each table. We have a cardinality maintained as many to one and I will change this to both. Checking to confirm that this option is checked, I will click OK to have the relationship created and close. And now we have our revenue by customer table also connected to our date table using the date columns on both tables. So I'm going to go ahead and create the relationship for the other tables by just simply dragging the service date column 
into the date column in the date table. Now we have gotten to the fun part, visualizing our data. Each problem statement and KPI informs the choice of our visuals, ensuring each visualization is not just pretty but insightful. So I am going to start off by adding a background to my canvas. So if you have the transparency reduced to zero, you have your background revealed. We would give the dashboard a title by adding a text box. And you can have that formatted to your preference. Slicers are like magic wands, allowing users to filter data interactively. You want to see revenue for a specific region, quarter or month, just click on the slicer. So we would create three slicers for region, quarter and month. I'm going to have this blank removed by going to the filters pane and have everything checked except for blank. Make my slicer layout 2 by 2 and then have the format function used for the title duplicated for my slicer and I'll have it further formatted for clarity. I would give this section the title Filters.
For the total revenue and total hours KPI, I'm going to go for this new card visual and drag both the total revenue DAX measure and the total hours DAX measure. Customize the format to enhance readability by adjusting text size and color as needed. For month-on-month -month revenue percentage increase, we will go with the line chart visual type. Drag the service date into the visual together with the month-on-month -month revenue increase DAX measure. And adjust the visual's format and settings for clarity. I will have the grid lines removed by turning off the vertical and the horizontal button and have the line color changed to my preference. I will also have the title edited. For total revenue by department, I'm going to go with the stack bar chart. and drag the department and the total revenue DAX measure into the chart. For revenue percentage of overall revenue, I will go with the stacked column chart visual. Drag the region field to the chart and also the revenue percentage of overall revenue DAX measure. For her revenue by region, I will use the donut chart. So drag the region field into the chart and the total revenue DAX measure. And lastly, for the revenue by clients, we will use the table visual to list clients and their total revenues.
and we are done. As you look at our dashboard, you will notice several key visuals that represent our data insights, starting with our card visuals, total revenue, and total hours. These provide a snapshot of our company's performance at a glance. We turn our attention to the revenue by region. With this, we can tell where our operations are most lucrative. Let's not forget the interactivity our dashboard offers. Each slicer and visual is interconnected, meaning your selections in one part of the report instantly reflect across orders. This feature empowers you to slice and dice the data in various combinations, uncovering hidden insights that static reports can never reveal. In wrapping up our tour, it's clear that the dynamic visuals in a Power BI report are not just about presenting data, they are about engaging with it, understanding it, and uncovering the stories it tells. We have only scratched the surface today, so I encourage you to explore further, ask questions, and let the data guide your experience.